Hi, this is Blake at Human Factor, and we make podcasts for associations easy in three ways. Just remember www. First, the why. Why are we creating this podcast? And are there any others like it? This will help us implement a strategy for success and help find a way to integrate the podcast into your existing strategy. The next is workflow. We have to figure out a workflow to get the show recorded. Whether you want to come to our studio, record on the road, or record from your office, we've done it all so we can figure out what's best for you and what fits your budget. Last is the what, as in what to do with this. Since now we have goals defined in the strategy and some content created, we can talk about how to promote the show and maximize this content. We can figure out what social media platforms and different ways to boost it to the listenership. At Human Factor, we love helping membership-based organizations with their podcasts and add value to their community. For more tips and tricks, free videos and articles about podcasting, go to humanfactor.net. Welcome to Association Chat, produced by Amplified Growth and Human Factor, talking about all things association, nonprofit, and anything else that pops into my mom's head. And now, here is your host, Kiki Italian. All right, I'm so excited. Blake, oh my gosh, it's another week. Another, another week. Another week, another glorious association chat. I forgot to push a button though, hold on. Hey mom, can we go to Hot Topic when you get home? Oh my God, <laughs> she just wants more and more. What's going on with she all wants of that? More. Yes, money. yes, more money. Money. More money. More Everybody wants that. More money. That's you know, a funny thing. Um, so yeah, so in the association space, we are talking about community all month long for association chat. Lots of good stuff. And today I'm really excited because we're gonna be talking with someone whom I think is absolutely fascinating. Um, I had the good fortune of meeting him in person and actually speaking with him on stage at ASAE's XDP one, XDP. two years. XDP, one or two years ago. I think it was two years ago. Yeah. And uh, let me tell you, Eric Kuhn is a successful entrepreneur sitting at the intersection of media, entertainment, and technology. Ooh. Yes. Most <laughs> recently, he helped start and run Layer 3 TV, a next generation cable provider that sold to T-Mobile previously. And this is the part that everybody gets really super excited about. Yeah, what's that? It's He was Hollywood's first social media agent at United oh, Talent Agency. I see where he represents some of the industry's top writers, directors, actors, and producers on investments, digital strategy, and social media. So the if guy, I'm an agent, this is my guy, huh? That's what you're saying. <laughs> I don't know if he'd agree with You'll have to talk to him later. Yeah. I don't know. I have, yeah. I, ha I have a killer MySpace account. He'll talk to just you. Just dead silence. I maybe know. later. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, in, in, I have to just say this one part because he's done so many cool things, and I actually want to spend more time talking to him than about him. But um, he has done things like become, he became CNN's audience interaction producer, running social media and producing some of the first television programs that integrated digital platforms. And this season, he produced his first Broadway show, Harvey Firestein's Torch Song. So um, without, I'm not gonna read all of the rest of it. It yeah, could go on. He has a Wikipedia boring. entry. Yes, go, go check go. it out. Thank you, Eric, for joining us today. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. So, um, so you guys was, met it was my face like live as you did all of that? No, now it's on though. <laughs> oh, now we're on. Now we're on. Okay. Yeah. We got lots of we got lots of cameras in this place. You know, the question is, you know, I feel like when people are talking about you or introducing you, there's that weird kind of like, what do I do? How do I Hi? Yes, that's me. Yes. And yes. and always and always like where do you put your hand? I know, like, you know, that's always, right. that's always the weird, that's always the weird <laughs> part. And when I'm on, and we're on Zoom, yes. right, that's how we're doing this. So, so normally when I'm on Zoom, yeah. I'm not 
attention because nobody sees my face. But now, now you're, now I see you. Well, and to add to that, so yes, we've got this going on, but then Blake's doing all of this magic about all these different camera angles and stuff. So I just have no and idea. Graphics. Your name actually appeared under your face. I know. We have that technology. Oh, I Blake. Know, the lower it's, all, it's always all about Blake. Yes. It is. Now he's. I, well, that's what I keep telling her. <laughs> I keep telling her that. You know what? He he's so fast. He like got the secret real quick. Yes. All right. So. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you for having me on, and and it's uh, it's so fun to be here. And I know you and I've you and I met once over an epic weekend. Epic. It was amazing. I mean, really, we had a really interesting conversation. You know, I think I think we had a really interesting conversation about about FOMO. Yes. And um, is that and fear how of missing out? Happened to FOMO, and I think it's sort of. Well, you know, even in, in the past year or two, we've just evolved so much in in how people view technology and and uh, how people use technology. And so, like, what a I you know I always say this, but um, but like, not to be cliche, but what a great time to be alive. Right? I mean, there's so much happening. It is. It's so amazing. And so, I mean, to that to that end, what's got you the most excited right now? I mean, what's really firing you up lately? You know, I think um, in in technology, right? Yes. I think you know what's so. Well, I was thinking about this this question, um, and you know, there's AI, there's mm-hmm. autonomous vehicles. Um, you know, I still believe uh, that we're trying to figure out what to do with blockchain. Yeah. And and there's sort of we're not we're not there yet, but we're at early stages of it. Um, but I gotta say, what what actually really excites me about technology is that we're now finally having a really good dialogue about it in the country mm-hmm. and around the world. Mm-hmm. And I think that kind of what excites me about technology is that we're using less of it, and that we're meeting in person. Um, as you as you mentioned, I've I've started to produce theater. The the um, the notion that everyone's in the room and experiencing something together with their phones off is right. so beautiful and exciting. And so I'm I'm excited by by that we're we're having a dialogue of what it means to give your kid a phone early on, um, to not sleep in the same room as your phone, right? And I think I think always as technology advances throughout history, we've had to sometimes reset or have have real conversations with that with this technology and what it means about this technology. I think we're at that point right now, and I think that's a really interesting point to be at. I think you're right. I mean, I think it's no coincidence that like Marie Kondo with all of her stuff and everybody's talking about, you know, uh, does this give me joy and getting rid of all of the excessive extraneous, you know, stuff that's just out there. It kind of goes hand in hand with what's going on with technology, where it's we want the technology when we want it. You see that with voice. I want to be able to just speak to the air and make stuff happen. Right. But I don't necessarily want to be tethered to it, checking it, craning my neck all the time to be invested in the phone. I want experience. I want to be, you know, I want to be able to move about in my world with other human beings and like experience what's around me. And so it is a really interesting time because it feels like it's taken a long time to get to this point where we can start to make some healthy separations between our lives and our technology, you know? And I think, you know, when, when we gave our speech together, um, we, we talked about FOMO, which is, which is fear of missing out. And social media has so, it's, it's advanced FOMO so much, right? Yeah. Um, you, you never post the photo of you sitting at your desk. On Instagram. <laughs> that's, that's boring or, you know, yeah. like basic as the kids say. <laughs> um, and so, you know, but I, but I think, I think we're actually, and, and, um, I, I think we're having a conversation now, and and it it goes to what you just said about what brings me joy. I think I think we're having a con- we want to focus on love now, right? Yeah, it's like enough. Yeah. We've been scared. I mean, we live in such a volatile, crazy time with so much news and information coming at us, and we're trying to figure out what's real and not, and so forth and so on. And I just you know I think the ability to love and the ability for technology to foster that, or sometimes putting away technology to foster that. Um, I think it's great. What a, like that's that's what we should be focusing on, and that's what excites me. Yeah, I think so too. It's it is kind of interesting the way that um, we have the ability to to come together and and figure out what our plans are in an easier way using technology 
But now it's like, okay, yeah, like I don't want to be on my phone across from you on your phone the entire time. And let's just agree not to be those people, right? You know, and, and moving beyond it. I want to talk a little bit about, you know, what you've seen as far as how people are adapting and using technology in a way that helps them to, um, you know, maybe, I guess, do a better job of representing themselves to other people and representing their brands to other people. Um, I think that that what people expect online has changed quite a bit. And along with our along with our discussions of FOMO, I think that people do expect a little bit different behavior um, from some of the celebrities and from some of the uh, you know influencers in the space. Um, compared to what it was in the early days. Do you agree? And if so, you know, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's something that I've always said, but I think now people, um, I think, I think now people agree. Um, Did they not agree before? (laughs) Don't, don't waste, don't waste my time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and we have, we have so many, remember in the, in the early days, it was like, you know, companies who produced widgets said oh my god we need a pinterest strategy yeah and it's like, why do you need a pinterest strategy you're doing nothing that has there's nothing that's visual right yes. and so um you know I'm, I'm sort of guided by this cardinal rule which is not to use technology for technology's sake but use it for a purpose and you know i even see it i mean we have so many tv shows that we have to watch right so when you watch a bad yes. tv show i get offended i'm like me too you know, right it's like yes. it's like no i don't have time for this so yeah. i think i think that's what you know i i really hope now that people think about okay what piece, don't create content you know i i get asked all the time well how much should i tweet how many instagram posts per week <laughs> Six. And the answer is the answer is it's not that it's it's good. Is it is it good? Is it good content? Is yeah. it is it content that represents your brand and aligns with your brand? And that's what you should be putting out. And right. I think you know I think we we all got our you know we're we're done. You know fi- you know Facebook I think is turning fifteen or just turned fifteen, right? Yeah. It's like everyone's on it. We're on it. We know how to use it. We're now onto this phase where we should be creating great stuff and actually having a dialogue and conversation. I think if you're a organization or if you're a leader of an organization you that's what you have to be doing Mm -hmm. I think you're I think you're absolutely right so do you do you think that there's still a place for some of the organizations that are saying like especially in the association realm a lot of times there's some uh, feelings that they don't want to invest necessarily right away in you know higher production quality um putting out the regular show or whatever it doesn't have to be a show but you know what i mean um content that has a different sort of look or sound um do you think that there's a place for people to do something that is more raw or do you think it needs to necessarily uh be something with a high production quality if you are say a trade organization or you know uh, any kind of a so- professional society that's out there. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to go back to my, to what, you know, people want good content Yeah. and good content can be a hundred million dollar blockbuster movie, mm-hmm. or I just came back from Sundance, or it could be a hundred thousand dollars and a couple of kids, but who have a story to tell and a point of view. Yeah. Right. And, and I, and that's obviously film and, and that's part of my background, but you know, it's the same with an association. If you have something to say that's impactful and meaningful and will make a difference, then go and say it. And and whether you you flip open your iPhone or whether you do a, a an, you know a Facebook Live or or whatever it may be, great. And if you want to go into a studio and so forth and so on, there's so many high quality studio productions. Um, uh, you know, ways that people communicate that are done so poorly. And there's so many, you know, <laughs> off the cuff tweets, et cetera, um, yeah. that, you know, that, uh, I mean, I mean, look, and, and this is, this is not, this is not a political statement, but look at, you know, look at our president, right? Yeah. He sort of sits in his pajamas and, and tweets. It's, it's as low form of content. And I, I mean, you know, it's, it's just text <laughs> as, uh, right. As as no it, production, as it, yeah, but it, but it, but it moves, being low. it moves, and people read it. And it's and again, true. this isn't this isn't a Trump conversation, but I'm just sort no. of saying like it's not studio lights, hair and makeup, et cetera, et cetera. And then you know, uh, tonight is the State of the Union, and yes. so he'll get his 
his hundred million dollar show too. Right. So it's it's sort of just a matter of of what it is. Yeah, I agree. Have you jumped on the Have you jumped on the the voice first uh, train of like creating content for that or looking at creating content for that yet? Oh, totally. I mean, yeah. I and I think and and you were you're you're the you're the hostess with the mostess. Uh, when we <laughs> when we had our little pre call, you recommended a book and you and you sent me an Audible and I wrote back. How do you know Audible is my favorite app? <laughs> and I just I just listened to all the podcasts and and all the books on audible and i um or you're in my office if, if you can see it and i i'm a voracious reader i read so much but the ability to listen oh, now while you're on the go yeah um i i love i love I, I i walk to work every day i start my day with the daily um and and what you know what that has done for the new york times is is incredible yeah. um and so yeah i absolutely um i i absolutely think that that's a that's a great way you got to you gotta, you gotta give me information. You gotta, you gotta make it accessible. Um, you can't really disrespect my time. And I think if you're doing that, and if you're giving me something that I want to listen to, I think that's, that's great. Well, I think that it, your point actually can't be bolded or underlined or remarked upon enough about doing something that makes a difference because my God, I mean, it's even cliche to talk about how noisy it is these days, you know, with having so much out there. I mean, my watch is like, I've got the haptics, I've got like every sense is being assailed with like, you know, uh, all kinds of different types of information does that information like matter matter at all and and am i happy to get that kind of content that kind of information delivered to me i think we're getting really really good at filtering and whether it's ad blockers or whether it's figuring out how to cut out all of the you know how to marie condo all of the stuff we don't want in our life. We're trying, you know, I think we're getting pretty good at that. But this is a great that. opportunity for associations because, I mean, they should be the voice. They should be the one place you go to creating the content. I mean, to curate, to, to provide a curated, this curate is the best or make of, themselves, whichever. Well, it could be. It could be. This is a really great question for Eric. I mean, what do you think? You know, this is an opportunity for associations that are seen as sort of the voice of these specific Fill in the blank. industries. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, what do you think their role is in light of the fact that, you know, people are looking for ways to kind of, you know, cut away the clutter and cut away the noise? And I think I think that's exactly right. And Blake, I think you bring up this this. It's so right. An association, and and you're you're the you're the worldwide expert on associations, but but associations represent all these different voices. And so they have this unbelievable ability to talk, to to create information that's relevant and not just create noise. Mm -hmm. And and to be that filter and curator and and whatever that looks like. And so I think that. Associations are, you know, and that's what people want. People want, if you look at the daily, which I just mentioned, or if you, you know, is, it, or if you look at Axios, right, um, or my my favorite person to follow on Instagram to get news is Jessica Yellen, who was a former uh, CNN correspondent, and and her slogan is "News, not noise." Yes. And I think it, I think it's directly trans transitional into, or you can make the parallel into associations, right? People don't want noise. They don't want, they want a single source that gives them real filter down smart information. And I think that that's exactly where an association can sit is they can be that voice for a whole slew of people. The other thing that I'd say, um, there's a, an incredible writer by the name of Bob Lefwitz and uh, he has an email and a podcast and he wrote this, this column the other day that, um, and he's a, he's a music journalist, but you know, what is the definition of, of being famous today and being an influencer today? And I think it's really interesting because associations, they don't have to reach everyone. Mm -hmm. They just have to reach the people that they are supposed to reach and their group. And so, you know, the best thing that you can do when creating content, when I create content, I have a single person in mind and I try to reach that person, right? A, a general, either yeah. figuratively or literally mm -hmm. one, one type of person. And um, I think associations have that. They have that person that they can reach. And if, and if the person creating the content, if the marketing per team and who, you know, if, if that content isn't reaching them, then I think you got to go back to the drawing board. You got to say, okay, what is it that this type of person wants who does this? And right. I think, I think you got to then give them that. Yeah. 
I love that because, you know, we have all of the capabilities um, to be super creative. I mean, the, the technology that we carry around with us, you know, just one single person with a smartphone these days has more capability in um, recording video and sound and taking pictures and creating all of this content and distributing it like Never before. Like if you would have given, I, I think about it, like if you think about like Orson Welles, like if you would have given Orson Welles this kind of like all of these little tools and gadgets, um, what would Citizen Kane have looked like? <laughs> you know, it's crazy. And yet these days we see people who are doing some of the similar things that he did with um, movie cameras cutting holes in floors and like rigging up pulley systems and stuff to create interesting shots, you know? And so I think it's fascinating that we have all of these wonderful tools, all of this great technology. Um, and it's really the challenge is up to us to as, as humans to what create, to, to create really good stuff. But with that, I mean, do we have an excuse to suck? I don't think so. I think, I think like, we, but I think we do. Like the pen and paper has been around for how long? But you can still write a sucky, sucky book. Yeah, I, I mean, I've been, I've been working at writing a real sucky yeah. book like for several years now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, I, yeah. I think you know what I think. Um, I think if you're an association or a company or a person, um, you have to allow yourself the ability to suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, because without having the ability, if, if you go into it saying we can't suck, then you really can't innovate. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think what's incredible about technology is you learn pretty quickly. So it's, it's not it's whether true. or not you, you can suck or not. It's whether or not you're listening to that audience ah. and you're getting what they want out of you. Right. And so I think that that's the ability that technology gives is not that you, that you, you should experiment, but you should also listen to that experiment. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also, you know, I think there's this great notion of, um, and, and you'll know, and you'll know, right? You, if people aren't watching your videos, if people are, are tweeting at you, so on and so on, then you'll, you should be able to adjust. I think there's this great notion of, of art and science. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I think the, the ability to create art, but also, and this is videos, tweets, whatever it may be, um, theater, movies, et cetera, but, but the ability to create art um, and have a gut that says the audience is going to like that um, is a very cool skill that shouldn't always over be overwritten by, da by, da by data. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and so I think that, you know, I, I, but, but so, so listen to that gut, but I think also listen to the data. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to the sure. data. Listen to the data. You know, listen to the data. Yeah, next, uh, to that point, next week, we're having Ron Moen on. Oh, here's the plug. Yes. Get to on it. On Association Chat. And he's going to be talking about machine learning, AI, and yeah. what we can learn from data analytics to apply to associations. Um, he's going to- my, Has my friend Seth Godin come on? He has. Oh, we're buddies he with Seth. He was on, yes. No, he's buddies with Seth, actually. I yeah. think it was a- I think We're all was, friends now. <laughs> Good. He's he's the best. I've I've read all of his books. They're all on my bookshelf. I'm I'm and his blog. And yes, he's, he did a magic brilliant. trick for us. He did a magic trick for us. I yes. can do a magic. Trick. I think he's just waiting to be asked or any yes. excuse, right, to, to get, do a magic to do trick. The magic yes. Trick. Yeah. Hey, I have a quick question. It, I, um, Eric, are you still in the uh, repping business? The uh, the uh, influencer repping. Great. It's a great question. Um, not, uh, you know, I, um, I only really, the answer is yes, but I really only represent a very few select clients who I, who I really love and admire, um, and who have a point of view. Um, I, um, one client that I've, that I've really been working hard for, um, is Fabiano Caruana, who is the number one chess player in America. Oh, uh, my God. And he was yeah, right. the first chess player since Bobby Fischer in 1972 to go to the World Chess Championship. Um, it was a few months ago. He played extraordinarily well. Um, unfortunately, the very last second uh, uh, loss. But, um, oh. but anyway, so, so oh, I well. do, you know, and I think he's, I think he's unique and interesting and, um, and I think, you know, we, I, I love telling people this story about, about chess and, and getting chess out there more. So, so I do represent a few people, um, but, and I, and I certainly advise as a friend, a lot of friends 
Um, but I don't, I, it's not my full-time job anymore. That was my setup question for the real question, which is how many MySpace followers do I have to have to get you to be interested? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Blake really, he really wants your help, Eric. I can tell. I, mean, I have, I really have hundreds does. of friends. <laughs> Do you? On, on do MySpace? You really? No. And by the, the serious question is, uh, 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 how many, in, in that world, in that universe, oh to get God. serious, how many people would have to, how many uh, followers, how much influence do you have to have to get someone like yourself interested? Hmm. You know, look, I think, um, I think, I think that's a complicated question. Mm-hmm. I think, um, you know, if, if when I was a, when I was an agent, it's it's what you do with those, and it's it's the crossover possibilities, right? Um, you know, just because you're an, it depends why you're an influencer, and it depends what your talent is. And um, I always, you know, I I think uh, I think it depends, it, you know. And there's all these now new terms about, you know, I don't want to sound old, you know, all these all these new uh, new terms. <laughs> That the kids are using. <laughs> terms these kids these days. Uh, oh. But you know, like these micro influencers with like five to yes. ten thousand followers. Um, but I want to know I mean, if 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 I were to sign you, I want to know um, what your vision is, what you want to do, um, and and can you kind of get off those platforms? Mm-hmm. Um, you can certainly make money on those platforms, but I think that's a short lifespan uh, or shelf space, and and so um, people move on, and so I think it's yeah. a matter of. Of, of are you talented in, in other places? Um, Blake, you seem to have a great career in, in podcasting, um, but I haven't seen you yet, so I don't know if you have a face for television. Oh, man. Oh. He's asking to see you in, I, I you think he to come needs on to see in you there? in action. I can come on in there and get on the camera yeah. with you if you want. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Let's, let's not do that. It's Blake. her show. You're, yeah, you're the not. producer. Her name's on the show. I sit in the dark room and push the buttons. <laughs> the button pusher <laughs> that is for sure all right so let's get back to association let's talk about it please i want to i want to find out a little bit about what you've seen that you think that association executives um might be missing out on or what you think that you know a, an opportunity that you see that's out there that you're not seeing enough people pick up on right now pinterest no <laughs> <laughs> okay all right you guys <laughs> What is this bell? I want a bell. I Everyone know. says that. I association. We Everyone need an says association that it comes chat in. Chat bell. I know. Everyone says that. I don't uh, want a bell. I'll right. send you one. I'll send you one. Let's go. Let's go back to creating content because okay. I think that that's really interesting, and I think that sometimes associations can sort of sit up here in the mm-hmm. ether and dictate and um, content or sort of or or talk down to people. Um, and I think that the way that you get people engaged is, is to talk with them and to have a dialogue with them. And so I think on no matter what platform you're on or no matter how you're marketing to them, I think, uh, you know, I think, I think this is, again, this is a weird, scary time. And I think uh, a lot of people were reading reports about how jobs could be going away, even though we see record numbers and so forth, you know, how jobs could be going away thanks to AI or different technology. I think people are scared in companies. Yeah. And I think that the role of the association should be to say, you know what, we like, and obviously they're not a union or something, but, you know, to, to say, hey, we're we're in this with you and we're going to help you through it. Yes. Um, yes. And, and I think that is, that's a cool place that associations could be right now. I think you're, I, I think you're absolutely, absolutely right. That is absolutely spot we on. We feel your pain. Well, the thing is, is that associations, if we look to it, it's more than just associating. It's more than just connecting with. It is, how are you going to be um, that particular organization or that friend who's going to help move people along in whatever industry so that, I mean, you could look at it as like a lifelong yeah. learning and networking. And a lot of people with like subscription boxes and all kinds of other types of um, for-profits are doing this where it's, they go in and they're like, come with us. We're going to send you these books. We're going to have, have these workshops and we're going to provide this learning for you. And I'm thinking, you know, associations, they should be doing that. They should be, they should, they have this all built in already. Yeah. Why are they? Why is not every single association thinking I want to be producing this type of learning podcast. experience, po- podcast, or um, or you know, learning opportunity where we are cultivating our people with us? Totally, 
There you go. There you go. All right. Well, that wraps the show. All right. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Thank yeah, that was good. By the way, I just um, I just took a sip of my coffee. I I ordered a venti, and I realized it's like the entire screen. So luckily, your your podcast listeners don't have to watch. Well, we had you panned away. I mean, but uh, but all your your viewers on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, but have you heard all? Have you heard about the asthma stuff? That oh, I'm good at it. Yeah, I had to tell Blake about this. That ASMR stuff. Associations need to know about this. You should tell them. I know. Tell well, us. tell us, tell us, tell us. You know what this is? There are whole this is channels. The dialogue. Tell us. There are whole channels devoted on YouTube to people like. And oh god, and you're slurping into no! the thing. Yes, yes, and like the nails on the stuff and they'll say like in this ep- in this episode i'm going to eat crab meat out of a lobster you know it's just it's 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 like <laughs> wait that didn't even make sense crab meat all- but anyway they whisper Good. and it's like this whispering and nails thing and uh eating and chewing blake blake you know what you know what you just did there with her voice yeah reverb so good. So my favorite app outside of Audible <laughs> is, is Marco Polo. Do you guys know this? Yes, app? yes. What do I know? I don't. Tell me. I need it. Oh, it's so great. It's like it's like FaceTime walkie talkies. Oh yeah, and yeah. It is so much fun. I do it with all my <laughs> friends, and you can make like images and faces and and um and sounds. Wait, and so it's a separate app or I do it's something I do on Facebook. So I mean, Facebook. No, 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 it's no, not it's on Facebook. Separate it's app. a separate it's called Marco Polo. Yeah. Okay. And so I we get it's on so and fun. it's terrible for productivity. It is. Why don't you and Kiki do it real quick? Well I'm actually sad that we're not on Marco Polo together, but I feel like after this Eric that Okay, maybe. we're gonna we're gonna get on Marco Polo. <laughs> hey lightning round now. How can an association use Marco Polo? They can't. Oh, come they on. Can't. They so can't. Not oh, everything has to do with an association, Blake. <laughs> this this is not show, about association. Name of the show, Eric. I know, but you know we what, sponsors though? that expect let's, it. Let's get, back, let's get back to our question. Enough yes. of a left turn. <laughs> yes, I know. No, but it's, it's true. I want to say um, before, actually, before we move on, I want to talk about, you know, where things are headed, where associations are headed. We were talking about the ways that they can – cultivate members the way that they can inspire people surely um but i want to get back to how you make it all work because one of the things that our listeners um are regularly dealing with is they're traveling all the time they are visiting all types of different conferences they're responsible for conferences and um you seem to do it all. I mean, you have you have great friends, you have a great career, you have a lot of interesting um, things that you're passionate about that you pursue, but also um, that you do for work. And you know, there's this whole question about well, how how can you do it all? You have to you have to sacrifice something. So what do you sacrifice? What have you sacrificed? Um, well, uh, it's a thanks. personal question. Yes. Thank you. Um, and that's, that's very nice. Um, uh, you know, as, as I've said, it always looks easier and better on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you know, uh, let's see, I, um, I, a few, a few things that I, that I'd say, um, I actually totally believe in sleep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, oh. and I am a very good sleeper. Uh, and, um, and I try to get a bunch of sleep at night. And then, you know, I also believe, um, I have a great, um, dog beanie bag, um, over there that I sometimes take power naps in. Um, and, uh, and so, uh, it's like in the shape of a dog. Um, anyway, so I'm, I'm a big believer in, in a, in a quick power nap to, to keep you through the day. And, um, and, and Starbucks is my friend. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, uh, although I'll happily debate anyone, I'll, you know, I'll have other coffee too. I just... Starbucks is around the corner, so I, I went it's and got easy. it. Yes. Um, <laughs> and um, you know, but I I think look, I think um, uh, I'm driven because none of it. I'm I'm lucky enough that none of it feels like work, and I do everything that really is something that I love. Um, and I also believe early on, and and I I learned this from my parents, um, the importance of doing it with people, mm. uh, and mm-hmm. and you know, and, and really sort of having great collaborators and also having great friends, um, and having great support. And I think we're, um, 
always, I think my friends and I are always in it together and we're, and we're real and we're vulnerable. And, and I think you need people in your life who you can, um, who are okay with your success, who love your successes and who celebrate yeah. your successes, but also are, are sort of with you uh, when it's not, not so great. successful, when it's hard or when you're failing or when you're falling um, and who aren't judgmental, um, but are really there to be, to be with you. And so I think that that's, um, uh, that's something that, uh, that I, I really sort of focus on, um, and, and really try to cultivate. And I think there isn't, uh, and that's, and that's really important. Um, so I think doing work that you're passionate, excited about, um, and you know, I'm also, I'm, I'm endlessly curious. I always want to know sort of what is, what's next, what's coming up. Um, and so, you know, to me, it, it, trying new things or doing new things, even if, if they might fail is, is a cool thing for me. Um, something that I've done recently, um, and there was just an article in the New York Times about this yesterday, but um, is I've started to do these things called morning pages. So I write three pages yes. every morning. And, um, and that's, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't meditate, um, uh, although I would like to. Um, and I think it could be awesome, but I, this is like a form of meditation to sort of get your thoughts on a paper every morning. And, oh. and, um, and so I, I try to, I try to do that every morning. And, um, you know, it's funny because I don't do it every morning, mm -hmm. but, um, but if I'm in the sort of mindset of trying to do it, and if I do it every other morning or if I do, you know, some weeks I do it, some weeks I'm busy, but at least I'm trying and I'm, and I'm working towards that. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and so I'm sort of in that, in that headspace every morning of, you know, and, and I, I try to be present and to put my phone away. And I have really good friends who will yell at me when I'm on my phone at dinner or, or whatever it may be, because I think being present and, and actually engaging with the world now more is, is important. So, um, you know, it's a, it's also a question that I think about every day, um, and that I'm refining my answer to every day. And, um, and so I, I, you know, I, I always, um, how do you, how do you do it? You do it all. You have a daughter. It's like, it's, it's, it's I incredible. Don't, you know, I don't do it all. And I, I do have to make choices on, um, some of the things that I can and can't do. And I wish I could go, for instance, I wish I could go to a lot more networking things and I can't, uh, cause I like meeting people, you know, I like, I like to meet a lot of different people. Um, but I also have, I want to be present in my daughter's life. And I also have, my own, you know, when you work for yourself, you're never really not thinking about that stuff. Um, but in learning, learning is so important. So I guess it's really like, like for you, where you set priorities and you know, okay, if I let my sleep or if I let my health or, or wellness slip, then I'm not going to be able to be good for my family, my friends, my business or anything. So I've got to, I've got to prioritize that. And it's just, it's a matter of, I guess, just making sure that your priorities are in order. One thing that I've been working on, um, especially, and, and the focus for February is, is for association chat is on community, is this idea of like establishing what communities or what groups you're a part of. And I'm doing this with my friendships as well. And deciding where you want to um, commit, like where you want to show up and be, uh, build that relationship or where you just need to, you know, not string things along or not like um, have this dead weight kind of. And I say that because there are a lot of groups that, you know, I'll join or something um, Things you waste that, your time. And it's a waste of time or it's just a drag on my psyche. Like I see this list of things over there that I'm not checking out or I'm not looking at. And I'm thinking I'm not adding to that conversation. And it's just over there. It's even if I ignore it, it's this mental clutter in the back of my mind. I know that at some point I said I was going to do something with it and I'm not doing anything with it. And it's just, I, I think, I think know. Gail, I, th I think either Oprah said it or Gail King said it about Oprah, but I think we're going to, we're going to say that I think Oprah says no is a full sentence. Yes. And I, <laughs> and I think, and, yes. I love, and I love that, right? I think, I think the ability to say no is so important. Um, yeah. And it's something that I work on every day because I like to say yes. And I think people like us like to say yes, but I think, uh, we can't do it. We, we, actually, we really can't do it all. And so I think, um, uh, obviously <laughs> I'm breaking news. Um, and, um, <laughs> and so, uh, and so saying no and, and trying to, trying to figure out uh, what is important, um, 
and, and having you time is important, right? I think, I think it is. Yes. I, I off think, and, I, and so forth. I think the no thing's really interesting. We had a call yesterday. I'm going to do this and then pair it back to associations. We had a call where I had a client yesterday, I believe, Kiki, begging me to move association chat and stuff like that. And I want to say yes. I want to help yeah. them out. But at the same time, you know, I'll kick your butt. Exactly. Yeah, yes. <laughs> but, but where I was going with this is, is the assist, in, association, uh, in the association world, you have lots of members that might want different things from you. Yeah. And I yeah. think the ability to say either we don't, that's, it, I, I mean, I've seen it, I, I can't name names, but I've seen it where one member might be suing another member. Well, you know, and it is something where I think that actually it's good, it's good for you for all kinds of reasons to be able to establish healthier boundaries. But it's good for other people. I think people trust you more if you have clear boundaries about what you will or won't do. And I think there's certainly respect that comes from that where it's like, okay, yeah, this, she's, not, she's not going to do this type of work or, she, or for this type of money. It goes into negotiations too. So yeah. I think that um, you know, it's an interesting thing, that the power of no. Yeah, it's a whole <laughs> sentence. Yeah. We've, re- we've, re- we've come to Oprah, and, by the way. Yeah. And respect, I think, I think respecting yourself and your time and, yes. um, you know, I think is, is so important. And so the ability to say no isn't, isn't you actually, you know, it isn't, it isn't mean it's sort of mm-hmm. important in, in the ability to do the other stuff that you've said yes to. Well, and it allows you to say yes and really, really be there. I mean, you're saying that, you know, you're making an effort to be present with the people in your life and not to be on your phone. But, you know, if you say yes too often, you can't avoid it because you are checking in with this person and checking in on that thing. And it becomes very difficult to be present in any one moment of your life. But, but I think the other you're thing, overextended. The other thing too, that is when you first start out though, I think you have to say yes a lot more to get in the door. Probably. So I got in that yeah. mindset of, all right, I'll take any gig. Like I just want to get in there and keep working. I get working. that. I get that. Yeah. So then you get to the point where now I'm freaked out. And especially after a recession yeah. where it's like, I would take any gig. I'd say yes to anything. But now, and I don't know if this applies to associations or not, but that's how I felt. And now it's like, okay, I can say no to that gig. Or that. I think it can apply to associations, and I'll tell you how. I think that um, associations, especially if they see their membership faltering, I think that they immediately think of wanting to reach out to bigger and bigger swaths of people. Like, let's just make it so that we are more relevant to more people. And they don't think Lose about they don't think about niche even beyond niching down. I saw like Chris Brogan put something the other day. It's beyond oops, sorry, niching down. It's like actually about um, getting real particular, getting very specific about who very you're particular way who you're reaching out to. And um, I would say that that's true. I, I think that associations can learn by saying no and saying, yeah, we're not for all people. Maybe what we're for is we are for this particular group of people, right? And well, I, think, I think if you know if, if I can if I can jump in, I think it's like yeah. you can. Not about, you know, I think I, think I hope you do. <laughs> yes, um, is um uh you know it's it's not and I and Blake I think your comment is is really interesting and and, and it's great. I think it's important that no matter where you are in life or in a corporation as a corporation you sort of have a mission statement and you you have values that are important to you. Um, and so, you know, just to go, you know, uh, when when you're starting out, if someone says, hey, um, you can make a lot of money, can you can you drop off these drugs? I hope you say no, not yes. Because How much you're, money? Driven by, you're driven by values and, and a mission statement, and obviously that's an extreme, that, uh, you know, that, that, that allow you to say, to say, to say no. And so I think that there's a there's a fine line, but I think the more you hold yourself in, as sort of an integ- in, in, in integrity, and the more yes. that you define who you are and what you want, um, allows you to hone in and and, and get what you want. Um, so, but, I, but I think that that's that's kind of important, and that's and that can be extrapolated into social media, how what, how you portray yourself in this world. Who you because because the the small amount of right followers is better than a lot of people that don't interact or don't care with you. It's such a good point, interact. and actually, it's that kind segue of segue coming. Here we go. Well, and the, so we have people who are asking questions on YouTube. We don't and, have music for segue. Of I course know, we do. 
So, um, so we have questions over on YouTube. Of course we do, Jeff. I mean, Eric, who do you think? What, Why, who, who are you talking to? Where's Jeff? I saw the, I have a Jeff, Jeff up from I last time. I don't even know. Okay, so, What's a, it's a question. Or are we so doing? we have questions over on YouTube coming in, and hi, John. Hi, Adele. And so, um, John says, question for Eric: How does he manage his network of relationships in terms of keeping up with folks he's recently met, and also remembering and investing in more longer tenured relationships? Who asked that question? This was John Exley. John Exley. Yes. Who's a big I fan did. of yours. Yes. Um, John, thank you. Uh, you know what? I always, um, now I'm totally embarrassed. But, you know, my favorite um, growing up as a kid was, was like, was, I don't know, a news junkie was, was Larry King. So I want to be like, John, you're on oh. the phone with Larry King. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from Detroit. Hello. Hello. Okay. I love Larry King. Hello. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. I'll never be invited back again. <laughs> You're, um, you might be my favorite guest of all time. I'm just saying. You know, more than um, Seth. And yeah. I, this, it's a great, it's a, it's such a great question. Um, and it was something that I actually was gonna was gonna say also. I think um, knowing your expectations, I think, is important too. So you don't set too high of, a, of expectations. So when I go um, to an event or something, I try to get one good relationship out of it. Me too. So then you're not always looking over that person's shoulder. You're not, um, you know, you're not, you're not disappointed when you only come home with two business cards and not a stack of ten. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I always try to go to somewhere. I go, you know what? I'm gonna find that one person who is really, really important and, and gonna change my life. Um, and and I think if you set that expectation, you could probably meet that expectation if, if you put yourself in in the right place. Um, you know, uh, new people I meet. Um, I, it, it depends. It, it depends. Um, it sort of depends on the circumstances. It, it depends on, on sort of everything. Um, I have sort of stopped giving out business cards, um, uh, in part because I, I am responsive on, on social media. So I, so it's easy to, to get to me. Um, and, um, and, but also, uh, you know, from, from sort of a networking standpoint, um, I collect all the business cards and then I email you and, and I do, I go through it. I am staring at business cards on my, on my desk right now. Um, and, um, but I, I want, I want people to, um, respond back or I want people mm -hmm. to, I, I, you know, there's, you've got to sort of show interest. Um, and it kind of goes both ways. Like I have to show, you know, we, we both have to, to, to meet at the same, at the same point. Um, you know, I, uh, people ask for, you know, calls or, or thoughts or, or emails, you know, I, I think it, it has to align. It has to make sense. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we all get these emails where it's like, wait, do you even know what I do? What business I'm in? Like, ugh, why are oh you, gosh. why are you pitching chairs? I'm, you know, I'm not, yes. in, I'm not in <laughs> um, uh, you know, or, or, or so forth. So, you know, I think, I think being really thoughtful of people's time and, and it goes back to, to wasting time with, with bad content. It's, it, you know, I, um, it's important not, not to waste my time. Um, uh, I, I really believe in long-term relationships. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I, I'd like to say um, I'm still friends with my kindergarten teacher. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think and, I watched um, when I was doing some research today, I, I watched some, um, I like to go back and watch old old videos of the people who are coming on. And I think I saw a commence, you gave a commencement address. Oh, that your, you were watching the high school? At your old high school. Yeah, I was playing that before. That's what you were playing? I heard that. Yeah, and I, an interview where you were called the father of influencers. And yeah, I think I, I've got, I've been going through your playlist. Um <sighs> Not even on your channel. I've been going. <laughs> I've been going through the, the best. Stuff. Yeah, I mean, I mean. Yes. By the way, by the way, you know, doing doing the commencement address, I um, I really am so. I I so believe. You know, I I so stand on other people's shoulders, and um, and I and I hope to, uh, make an impact on on other people. Uh, you know, as well, and and um, and so you know, I'm I'm such a big fan of finding mentors, of getting mentors for people. Um, and, um, and you don't need a lot. You just need one or two. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and, and people that, that you look up to and admire, I think surrounding yourself with, with those people are so important. So it actually, it was, it was really just one of the biggest honors I've, to, to give that commencement speech because, um, the ability to, to go to the place that I grew up and, and that I love and, and that shaped me and built me, yeah. um, in so many respects and, and say thank you to all these amazing teachers was, was, uh, was unbelievable. So I, it was a great, it was a great time. Yeah. Awesome. Is there more people on there? 
Uh, and by the way, the 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 uh, the theme of that speech was don't take no for an answer. Was it really? <laughs> don't take no. So you were actually giving people an argument for what you're saying we should do now. <laughs> yeah. Don't take no for an answer, but yeah. yeah. But now say but now, no. Say, say no, no a lot more. He's, he's more mature yes. now. He's, he's got a new philosophy. Yeah, yeah, we can grow. We'll grow. We're allowed to right. do that. Now he just says no all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and he knows what the answers are going to be back. Well, to argue it's with from, him. by the way, it's from a different point of view. Yeah. I think when you're starting out, it's, it's that you can say no, but if you want something, Thing. that's that's don't give up be persistent no don't, don't give up and don't take no for an answer and that you know i mean you and i and, and so you know everyone gets nose thrown at them oh yeah because that's the world that we live in and 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 you can't let that stop you and stop what you want and that was really the the theme of it yeah a friend of adele who's watching i know that the last message i had from her through a chat was uh persistence is key so more on that right just i love i love that it. adele is one of your fans i'm such a big fan of her <laughs> i know and she's so busy i know oh career my gosh. And... hello adele <laughs> there you go hey. so Okay, before you say what you're going to say, Blake. What am I going to say? I, I want to ask one more question. Did you have a mug to give away? I do have a mug to give away. Oh, okay. my gosh, you are so pushy. So 50 minutes. <laughs> so um, what I wanted to ask you is what are your favorite resources to go to for ongoing inspiration? And, you know, is there something that you – is there, like, a list of, like – magazines podcasts you know newspapers uh what is it that you go to on a fairly you know re you know regular basis to get inspiration from um so i try to mix it up i do i you know as i i, I i'm pretty um i read almost everything i get um i get magazines from so many different sources um you know, I think uh, innovation is, is sort of the crossroads of, of different fields. And so I'm always trying to, and I'm a, I, I get this from my grandmother. I like, I tear stuff out of magazines. Um, and, uh, and so I read sort of every, everything from people to the economist. Um, and, um, and obviously I don't read every word of it, yeah. but, uh, cause that's crazy, but, uh, but I do. Um, and you know, uh, I'm, you have to have, there's obviously that great book mindset. You have to have a, grow, a great a growth mindset, right? Yes. And so even when I'm, you know, something that I was at breakfast yesterday and I, and I, you know, we finished and she was telling me something about something new. And I said, okay, well, what's your favorite book on that topic? Um, and so I started my career as a reporter. I like to think I'm still a reporter. So yeah. I'm always asking people who I come across, hey, what do you think? What do you, um, you know, what's going on? When, when we created Layer 3, um, I would walk, we had retail stores and I would just walk in in a sweatshirt and ask them questions and stuff. So I, I do a lot of, I do a lot of research my, myself and I'm, I'm always out there and I'm asking people, um, most of my friends are always so embarrassed when they go out with me because um, I'll stop people on the street and be like, oh, where'd you get that, you know, whatever, or, yeah, or oh, yeah. do you like that? Or what do you yeah. think of this? Um, you know, God forbid you're in a movie theater with me where I have even more you're like, questions. Uh, I can't take I Eric anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, I think, I think that's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, a, um, and it's something that everyone obviously can do is, is, uh, um, you know, I think, I think the thing about a marketer and that's what we all are. And I think the people who are listening to this podcast are marketers, um, or video or, or any, any which way you're, where you're watching this or listening, um, uh, is, is to understand the consumer mm -hmm. and so, and, and whoever that consumer is. And so to be with those consumers to understand those consumers to ask them questions uh is so important mm -hmm. um and um and and to always be in touch with them um and so i think you know my biggest inspiration are from the people who are around me but um but but they're always but they they can sort of be anywhere and i and i really try to um see them and watch them and 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 sort of be be in it i as you mentioned I've, I've started to produce a little bit of theater and i was at a show recently and i and i ended up um watching the faces of people a little bit more than the show um because i wanted to understand how they were reacting um and i think that's really important too so i i think i don't know i'm inspired by people yeah i'm inspired by you i'm inspired by you i'm inspired I'm so by you <laughs> 
Love we're inspired you. by each you, other. But I'm sure I'm inspired by you too. I'm inspired by <laughs> you. You're making me look and sound okay, so like I'm inspired. by Yes, you. I know. This is the thing that we always love about Blake. Oh my God, did yes. I call you Derek Blake? Sorry. Uh, sure. <laughs> no problem, Jeff. I'm inspired by Blake. I know it was just it was just a slight. It was just a slight because you mixed up mine. Oh my gosh, you are you All guys. All right, Shirley, you ready, Shirley? I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> All right, Jones. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I want to just say, this is your chance, folks. This is your chance. If you want an association chat mug, Don't and I know like you do. This is my dancing. I know you're jealous. Uh, if you want an association chat mug, and I know you do, then you have to tweet us with the hashtag about how much you love association chat using the hashtag. It's up on the screen. Association Mug Life. Mug kind of like Thug Life, but it's Mug Life. We're going to do that. And so if you tweet us, I will get back to you. And we're giving out five association chat mugs this week. Isn't there a time limit? Don't they have to do it by the end of the show or something? Uh, it's almost at the end of the show. So you have to do it by the end of the day. Um, end of the and day. Frankly, if you're using the hashtag association mug life, You'll probably you get deserve one. a mug. So uh, go ahead and tweet us. With so association Eric, get on there. Mug get your life. mug. Yes. And... What's more is come back next week so that you'll be able to find out even more great knowledge. Eric, where can they find more information about you? I mean, I want a mug. We'll just oh, tweet I will it. send you. Did, did a you not mug. hear the instructions? I have, yes. I have, you can't. You can't see it, but I have. I have a whole slew of mugs here. I'm a, I'm a big mug fan. What kind of mug? Hold it I, up. Well, here I have. I have one. I have one from Twitter. Here's. Here's. Is that one of your? Do you like that shape? Do you like? I mean, mugs. Mugs are. are they're do you subjective. like a tumbler or do you like the? No, I'm, I don't discriminate against mug shapes. Yeah, I. Don't, I think yeah, it's good to be all inclusive on mugs. Me too. I'm. I'm all inclusive on on <laughs> mugs. Um, what was your question? How can they find me? I mean, yeah. you can tweet me at a u h n. Yeah. You can follow me on Instagram, Eric J. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you can you can say hello any which way. All the socials. Flair. Yes. And well, we know that we. The number is no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even hand out. He doesn't even hand out business cards no. anymore. So you know you better you, be. You, you give him one. You hope he get. He that's right. You. That's right. Actually, you know what? You know what? To be honest, I'm I'm really thinking about that because there was actually someone I wanted to get my business card to, and I was like, I don't have any. And well, um and so I'm gonna I'm actually gonna order some. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Go so we're move. rethinking the business cards. We're rethinking the business cards. Look at this. We're, we're no. An hour in and I'm rethinking my entire life. <laughs> oh, my. He's going to need therapy after association All right. chat. I know. I'll send you a mug and then you can drink something that will be like, like therapy. therapy. Therapy is Thursday. This is Tuesday. <laughs> Don't mix it up. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Eric. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Blake, for making us look good. And no, but seriously, thank you. I know you're such like a leading voice in, in this entire world, but in this world. And so, uh, and so uh, you're, I love it. I love following you. I love seeing what you're doing and, uh, and listening to this podcast. So it's really, I'm thrilled when you ask me to be on. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. All right. So let's wrap it up. Are you going to press up? the button? No, I can press button the button. Pusher? Do we have to do anything else? Is there any more I announcements think we did or anything it. like that? Yeah. All right. Here we go then. All right. Thanks for listening to Association Chat, produced by Amplified Growth and Human Factor. For more information on Amplified Growth, go to AmplifiedGrowth.net. And for more information on making podcasts for your association, go to Human Factor at HumanFactor.net. To hear past episodes, go to the Association Chat YouTube channel and subscribe. See you soon!